Fest 2009. I express to you my sincere appreciation and that of my dear wife, Frances, for the privilege which is ours to be a part of these services today and be presented with honorary degrees. We are filled with deep humility and great gratitude. My congratulations to you graduates. I also congratulate your parents, some here, some thousands of miles away. They have sacrificed and gone without so that you might receive an education. I commend your professors and instructors. They all bask in the reflected glory of the precious product upon which they have skillfully and devotedly labored, namely, you. My friends, you're living in one of the most precious and privileged periods of all human history. A period of change and of challenge and of infinite promise. Today, you will lay aside cap and gown, the traditional symbols of academic accomplishment. You will look back with pride on your achievements and look forward with hope to the future. In the near future, many of you will enter the various workplaces for which you train. Some of you may go on to further schooling, including graduate work, before you embark on a career. But you'll leave this chapter in your life and will live it. Whatever your pathway may be, I suggest three guideposts to assist in your respective journeys through life. They're easy to remember. Two friends to every traveler. First, glance backward. Second, reach outward. And third, press forward. Let us consider each in its turn. First, glance backward. As you look at your life thus far, you will learn from past mistakes, whether they be yours or those of others. You will recognize also that many people have helped you reach this point in your life. Give thanks to them, your family, your friends, your teachers, and others. Express gratitude to those professors who planted the seeds of learning and of curiosity in your fertile minds and have instilled within you the skills and knowledge you will need to succeed. The lessons you have learned from the faculty on this campus will enhance your life and your career. I suggested merely a glance at the past, for it is not practical to think you can return. Some of you may be familiar with Thornton Wilder's classic drama our town. If you are, you will remember the town of Grover's Corners. In the play, Emily Webb dies in childbirth, and we read of the lonely grief of her young husband, George, left with their four-year-old son. Emily does not wish to rest in peace. She wants to experience again the joys of her mortal life. She is the privilege to relive the twelfth birthday. At first it is exciting to be young again. But the excitement wears off quickly. The day holds no joy. Now that Emily knows what is in store for the future, it is unbearably painful for her to realize how unaware she had been of the meaning and wonder of life while she was alive. Before re returning to her resting place, Emily laments, do human beings ever realize life while they live it? Every, every minute. May all of us learn to appreciate the gift of life that we have been given. And may the lessons we learn as we glance backward help us to live more fully each day of our present, for such becomes our future. Now that we glance backward, let us reach outward to find real happiness 
we must seek for it in the focus outside ourselves. No one has learned the meaning of living until he has surrendered his ego to the service of his fellow man. Service to others is akin to duty, the fulfillment of which brings true joy. We do not live alone in our city, our nation, or our world. There is no dividing line between our prosperity and our neighbor's wretchedness. Try as some of us may, we cannot escape the influence of our lives and what those lives have upon the lives of others. Ours is the opportunity to build, to lift, to inspire, and to lead. We cannot be careless in our reach. Lives of others depend on us. The power to lead is indeed the power to mislead. And the power to mislead is the power to destroy. Your leaders at Utah Valley University, from the administration to the ranks of each professor and instructor, have left their imprint upon you. They have understood that the mantle of leadership is not the cloak of comfort, but rather the robe of responsibility. They reach outward and have touched your hands. And while we reach outward, we have the responsibility to press forward. Whatever part you choose to play on the world stage, keep in mind that life is like a candid camera. It does not wait for you to pose. Learning how to direct our resources wisely is a high priority. We don't have to keep up with change. We have to keep ahead of it. As Ralph Waldo Emerson observed, you are sensitive to a thousand influences, instructed by the past, invited by the future. You're not born equal. You are born unique. You have powers that have come to you from a host of ancestors. Your strengths are greater than your weaknesses. Finding our strengths, our unique powers, should be a purpose of the journey of life. Close quote. In our chosen fields, the obstacles confronting us may be mountainous in their appearance, even impassable in their challenge to our abilities. Press forward we must, for we understand full well that complaining is not thinking, ridiculing is not reasoning, accountability is not for the intention, but for the deed. No person is proud simply of what he or she intends to do. Let us not be deceived. Like the mice who voted to place a warning bell around the neck of the cat, we may mistakenly feel that the problem has been taken care of, simply because we discussed it. We may sometimes be tempted to say, will my influence make any difference? I'm just one. Will my service affect the world that dramatically? May I share with you a brief account of a man named Elton Staples. I think it teaches a great lesson. He was on a destroyer in World War II. He went into that bloody cauldron known as the Pacific Theater of War. His mother, back in Akron, Ohio, wondered, what can I do to help our war effort? She worked in an arms plant. Every morning, before she went to work, she would pray, Grant, and whatever I do today may be helpful to our country and to my boy. Elton Staples went down in the Pacific off Guadalcanal when his ship was torpedoed. Many were killed. He clung to a life preserver and floated to a rescue vessel from whence he was extricated from the ocean. He hauled up the life preserver with him and claimed it as his most valuable possession. Later, he found that that life preserver had been made in 
respected, and packed, back home in Akron, Ohio, by his own mother. My young friends, may you understand the real meaning of commencement. You, here and now, with diploma in hand, commence the next stage of your lives. You will continue learning after you leave today. For to cease learning is to cease existing. And the best way to prepare for the future does not consist of merely dreaming about it. Great men and women have not been merely dreamers. They have returned from their visions to the practicalities of replacing the various stones of their dream castles with solid masonry wrought by their hands. Vision without work is dangerous. Work without vision is drudgery. Vision coupled with work will ensure your success. Graduates, will you follow the guideposts? Will you glance backward, reach outward, and press forward? The choice is yours. Your future is bright. It is challenging. It awaits you. Safe journey. Safe journey.